Greetings, this is September 2nd at 11 p.m. and we are looking at rain over Williams Lake. And this may be part of a phenomenon uh, associated with one of our viewers and I'll explain that at the end of the video. We've switched to a picture from two days ago of the Beto Tree Cam looking out at Sheridan. Please watch in the center of your screen as it rolls into today. So we can see fire has progressed northwards. Let's take a look at the infrared on the VIIRS system uh, for 10 o'clock p.m. today. And I'd like you to notice this red six hour spot uh, just above center of your screen. And this is a recent hotspot now be, being displayed and if we click on that dot and look at the time it's coming in after 7 p.m. so there is recent data being shown is this an accurate representation of all the fire in the area I cannot be sure but let's take a look at what is being displayed. So here's an overview of the Elephant Hill wildfire. And we notice a lot of concentration of new spots uh, east of Pressy Lake and north of Hutchison Lake. And we also have some in that area around the pipeline and brigade uh, north of Hyheum. So on this information displayed, I believe there's enough new infrared to warrant an update and take a look at some of these specific areas, Hutchison and Pressy Lake, and there's also a lot of orange 12-hour old infrared, and we've also got considerable amount of older yellow 24-hour infrared. And please remember, these spots can be off 500 meters. I've seen them off a kilometer. Let's take a look at Pressy Lake, uh, approximately two kilometers northeast of Little Pressy. I'm seeing a start of let's say a dozen 15 red hot spots uh, they are east of that older existing uh, fire pocket and they're towards the intersection of north bonaparte and little green lake road this appears to be growth they are somewhat patterned it could be part of a control strategy we're going over to hutchison now i am seeing infrared in the six hour time period close to the shores north of hutchison and I'm seeing another group four kilometers to the northeast along this path of older established 24-hour infrared. I'm also seeing one that looks northwest of sodium and uh, uh, Marsden, uh, there's some older existing infrared in that area. And I'd just like to remind viewers that if you're local to this region you will know the area far better than i and hopefully this gives you an overview of what's occurring at this particular location now we're going southwards towards loon lake and we're looking east of loon lake around 551 road i believe and the pipeline there's been expansion in that fire pocket i'm seeing significant red trying to uh, expand on the fringes uh, approximately another four on each side of that area let's now go back to the northern flank but this time looking with the nrc data if you look to right of center of your screen you'll see sheridan lake and southwest of that is number two lake and we can see infrared being displayed on the southern shore of that lake and I've heard unverified reports that activity was occurring today within the last 12 hours near to Paradise Bay at the southwestern end of Sheridan Lake. However, when we take off the 24-hour indications, we are not seeing any activity there we're now only seeing what's happened in the last 12 hours so we should be seeing more infrared there if i go to the 24-hour map then yes i am seeing some activity south of number two lake and it looks like definitely east of west sheridan road if we go to bc wildfires a latest map update and that's linked below uh, we can see the Elephant Hill wildfire perimeter 
and the infrared is approximating that perimeter drawn in on the map and this is dated from September 2nd today so we have uh, some data to verify doing some collection this is the official version that's what I'm going to run with so here we're again looking at the satellite photo of those closest infrared uh, towards Sheridan South I'm the type of person that wants to see it with my own eyes. This is the best data that I've got to go on at this time, so I'll make my decisions based on multiple sources and the on-the-ground reporting from BC Wildfire. So let's now just switch over to Windy and take a look at what's been happening. Nine kilometers an hour from the northwest in this continued arc that's coming from 100 Mile House going over the plateau and then heading over to Little Fort. And if we look at the forecast, we should be well into that wind shift and speed should continue to slow down throughout the night and then pick up again tomorrow morning as the air heats up. If we go over to the other computer model, much the same. Winds are a little lighter at five kilometers from the northwest. We will see some light cloud uh, for the next couple days and here we can see that trough that's over by the Fraser and up to Williams Lake and we're up on the plateau so we're getting that higher speed and if we pull back and put it on the rain meter we are seeing rain at Williams Lake in this long band and if you've been following a long time uh, one of our viewers Nunu is in this meditation with the rains and I will say Nunu it seems to be working don't stop now and if we look out at the ocean it uh, seems to be pushing moisture towards us uh, half of it wants to head back out to the ocean on the north side but the south side seems to want to push us a little bit of rain so uh, Nunu, please concentrate on those southern winds bringing us a little bit of moisture. Thank you. And I will say this looks like a very positive sign for the people out in Hansville and in Williams Lake uh, to receive this gift from the oceans. So I'll keep monitoring for more information, for more verification of the fire perimeter. Uh, we have the latest infrared, we have the latest wind data, and we have the very qualified report from BC Wildfire. Combine all these resources, uh, verify your position, know your escape routes, and have all your resources planned ahead of time because it is an act of wildfire. And please be especially safe, everyone, and thank you very much.